Hey, how's it going? This is Rob Scott from PK Blends, located at 1002 Main Street in downtown Peekskill, New York. We opened up in May 6, 2017. The response has been great from the community. Juicing has changed my life. I figured, why not try to help change some other people's lives. It all started with the PK Classic. My daughter was drinking classics when she was like four years old. Before we knew it was a classic, we've been drinking classics. People love the milkshake. I have people that come every day for the berry blast. Not only do we do smoothies here, but we also do juices. It's a juice bar. We also do some vegan eats. So we have a burger that we do, some vegan nachos. We also have a pasta that we also do with spaghetti squash. And after you get a smoothie, or one of these vegan bites, you can come hang out for a while. But we wanted to create a more laid back vibe, more of a lounge type area, and very art driven. Thanks for watching. Fresh juice, vegan eats, good vibes. That's our mantra. Come down, check us out. Let me see, yeah. Okay, yeah, so you got to use the up and down. You'll hear it. You know you'll hear the click. All right, so. Um, I don't know if y'all want to. I don't know. If y'all can see and hear good, then y'all in the building. Stacy. Yeah, you might want to come up. But yeah, as long as y'all can see and hear good, y'all in the building. Um, so, as usual, we're not going to wait to the end for questions. So, please fire away with the questions as soon as you got them. You know what I'm saying? As soon as they pop in your head, fire away. All right? Um, so, the ancient comedic science of Hebrew. Uh, a lot of... And I guess it's a, a discussion that has to be open. But a lot of people talk about comedic science, comedic understanding. Is that? Oh, yeah, it's on. All right. Comedic science, comedic understanding, and I don't hear people talk much about the end game. You know, there was an end game to the whole purpose of the sacrifice, the diet, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And the only reason I think it's really relevant outside of those circles is because if people understood that today, I think a lot more people would change the way they live and eat. You know, there is a part two to this, so to speak. You know what I'm saying? After you transition, you know, there's a part two. So um, how electromagnetism becomes life, that right there is going to give people... Um, that are new to um, exploring their body, a more um, expansive view. And for people that have been studying their body, it's going to give you a few nuggets to take your research to the next level. All right. So, uh, when I started, I focused my research on... E now, the reason why... Um, a lot of this lecture has been put together is a compilation of questions. A lot of people say that, um, you know, I just approach the health thing a little bit different, so they kind of want to know. So I'm trying to shed some light on my thinking process and how I approach things. Because um, every, I don't know, every two years there's a brand new name to what it is that we're doing. You know, if you go back all the way to Dick Gregory time, it was just vegetarian. And when you looked in the dictionary, vegetarian had a one-word definition. Um, herbivore. That was it. So if you had a plant-based diet, you was a vegetarian. Over the years, it changed to the point where now we're moving into this new phase where, you know, it's quantum biology. You know what I'm saying? You so... Um, but I always go backwards. So the center of my research um, has always been on uh, ancient Egypt or Kemet because that's where the center of organized medicine and healing came from. And in that study, 
it's interesting because when people debate, it's an organized argument. So in an organized argument, just like any argument, you really just grabbing anything to justify your stance. And so just now my lady was online the last few days. The meat eater's been going heavy on Facebook. You know what I'm saying? Like, like that conversation never dies. You know, the meat eaters versus the plant. But me, I don't entertain it anymore. You know, I'm like Princess Antoinette. Like, let him eat cake. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's my philosophy now. No, there's no, there's no ancient science or scripture or religion that said everybody was going to make it. I had to come to grips with that. Like even the Bible says only 144,000. It's eight, nine billion people on earth. Bible says only 144,000. So that means, hey, I don't have to argue with everybody. Knock yourself out with that, that double burger, bacon, whatever they call it now. Angus masterpiece. Like they're coming out with a new, I mean, the meat's getting cheaper and bigger. I, I, crazy right so so have that but I noticed that there was two types of um, healing being practiced at that time there was one for the priesthood or the royalty or the the well-to-do folks and then there was which basically is what's going on today you got John Q public what they get and then you got what people with affluent people get so, um, in these conversations, when people dip backwards, they don't reference where they're grabbing the information from. It's just whatever suits the argument. So, if you dig digging back three, four thousand years ago and talking about people that were sick and poverty stricken and you're using that as a reference, eh! I'm kind of good on that reference. You know what I'm saying? I don't need those practices to... So, you know, we want to look at the best. But anyway, I found some interesting things and that kind of became the central focal points for what I do. Um, swaj. Um, one of the interesting things was that there is... They don't, they don't have an idea of dead. Dead doesn't exist. That's a relatively new thing. So life was always transitioning into different types of life, period. There's no dead thing. So even the vocabulary, even the language, even color, like there's no such thing as like, like how we look at red. It's just a color. Red to them was a process because in life you can look out and you can see things becoming red. So when they talked about red, it wasn't just the, the color red. It was all the underlying processes associated with red because they understood electromagnetism. So green, not only meaning uh, swaj, swaj, that's what, that's what the, uh, the ancient Egyptian word for green was or greening, because there's no dead, you know, everything is a process, so it'd be greening, becoming green, right? But that also was the same word for healing or flourishing. So if you was doing good in business, that meant to flourish. If you were healing yourself, that meant healing. Or if something was becoming green, it was all the same term. So for me, that was like mind-blowing right there. You know, I just have these mental orgasms and then... You know, it's, it's, if nobody was listening, I would still be doing what I do. You know, I didn't get exposed, so to speak, until my daughter, well, daughters, I should say, but Amber really got the brunt of it because Tony was in the accident too. When the nurse went to sleep, she jumped the street. She just, she got that energy. So she's always out of harm's way. You know what I'm saying? And they got the same mom and dad, but just her and, you know, she just, she's always out of harm's way. So when she jumped the curb, 
um, Ari, who was the oldest at the time, she was in the middle. Tony was closest onto the sidewalk, and Amber was closest to the curb. So when the nurse jumped the curb, Amber was the one who got the brunt of the accident. And so, um, you know, doctor says she would never walk again. Broken neck, broken spine. That happened August 28th. She was back in school that February or March, running around. Um, then my oldest son, his mom, Pam, she had diabetes real bad. First of all, they said she could never get pregnant. But that's, that's another thing. Um, but then she had diabetes, got off the diabetes. And so these little stories start circulating around the neighborhood. And people start asking me questions like, hey, how would you do this? What did you use for that? whoop de whoop de whoop So at the time, it still wasn't a business thing. I was making $70,000, 80000 a year selling phones with Verizon. I was good. Range over, you know what I'm saying? I was all right. I was like, no, no, I'm not with those conscious broke niggas. It's not me. <laughs> not going to happen. I'm over here with white folks. White folks takes care of me good. Um... But they kind of just pulled me and pulled me, and it it just happened. So people was asking me questions. The questions became classes. Um, me telling people to get products turned into, well, if I give you the money, can you go get the products? So now I got to have the products, and we're here. So... You know, it just kind of happened over time, but these little things are what push me and keep me up at night. When I see little things like this, and you see that today's science or whatever's cutting edge for today matches what was going on four or five thousand years ago. Then you know that's that's real truth. That's something that really has weight because it stood the test of time, and not just time, but people. So, uh, eyes being pools of water, cells. So, the term "I" didn't mean this. The term "I" actually referred to pools of water or what we would call cells, compartments of water. Now, that had a very strong spiritual connotation which people forget when they look at this. There's a lot of heavy science. And some, of, some of the things I put here we can discuss. Like I said, as um, soon as a question or comment pop into your mind, just let it fly. But um, we'll see her which was the, the, the original name that then became Asar and Osiris. The definition for that is seat of creation or the eye of creation. So um, a lot of people know this as the eye of Heru. It wasn't always the eye of Heru. Before it was the eye of Heru. It belonged to Hecate. She got it from Ray, another name for Wusir. Um So it just, it's just all these things kind of just began to sit in my mind and later on they would come together in like a nice little symphony and then I'd be able to see the body in a, the way I see it and then it just makes it easy to kind of fix stuff that's out of place. So as we move through you'll be able to see more of the picture um, and which was my which was my goal today just to kind of start to synthesize or give people my system of how I see. Because even with the God Complex class, I'm teaching people the body, how everything works, all the little pieces, how they all fit together. But not necessarily how my mind works when somebody calls me for a consultation and how I'm, how I'm sit putting it together and, like, I got a sister in Detroit now. She booked a couple consultations, and I'm like, hey, you're in Detroit, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I hear what you're saying, but listen, we're going to be on the track in the morning. 
Meet me on the track. It's like, well, you know, we, we can just talk. No, 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 no. Meet me on the track in the morning. We're going to get this hands on. So we did a couple workouts, and she's like, so, you going to tell me the stuff? I'm like, I'm telling you the stuff. We actually live in the stuff. Like, so, you know, it's, it's a... It's just a way to, to, to view the body, and it's really simple when you, when you think about how it is. It goes back to the ancient paradigm, really does. Fire, earth, or like we watch Avatar a lot, the cartoon. I, I'm telling you, it's just really that simple. When you look at fire, the main thing your body needs is hydrogen. You got to stay hydrated. That's fire. Earth, that's your minerals. Iron, calcium, magnesium, that's earth. Water, doesn't need to be said. Air, oxygen, like, I mean, I'm, I, I'm looking, I'm like, wow, this is, and this is just on TV, huh? For free. <laughs> Meanwhile, folks paying doctors, what, $900, $1,200 a visit? We don't know how much we're paying, because we sign up, and then we go sit in emergency. We don't know what they're getting ready to send us in the mail. And we don't care most times, because we don't pay <laughs> Medicaid or insurance. We don't know what they're charging. But all that information is right there. So I start to look at the, uh, the fractions of the eye of Haru. You know, you Google it. They got one half for this thing, one fourth for that thing, one eighth, one sixteenth, one sixty-fourth. And so my daughter, Tony, she's into music. So... I'm looking at the musical scale, and I'm like, oh, man, this is the musical scale. So some people might notice that that's the musical scale, that they got the, the fractions of the eye of Heru. But you got to be interdisciplinary to notice that there's something else to that. Sound waves, which is vibration. Sound waves are transformed into light by piezoelectric crystals. So that doesn't really make much sense until you figure out like, oh, wait a minute. My whole skeleton is one big piezoelectric crystal. So now I'm like, let me look back at that thing again. Let me look back at that thing again because... I'm like, wait a minute. So, we already with I being a pool of water, right, or a cell, right? So that's the seed of creation. And now we're talking about sound being transformed by my skeletal structure into light. Now, here's where the water and the light come into play. When sound is transformed into light, right? See, that's why you got to be interdisciplinary. So I, that's why I always tell people you got to be an inky vision. So I'm trying to give people some inky vision with this, with this lecture, right? When photons, because most people don't know, we think the sun is hot. Like we think stars are hot because we get heat from the sun. So, nine out of nine point nine out of ten people would be like, "Hey, is the sun hot?" Like, nigga, that's a dumb question. Of course, the sun's hot. And you ask them, "How come space is cold?" They don't have an answer. That's because the photons that the sun releases are actually cold. Light doesn't generate heat until it enters a living system. So as those photons come into our atmosphere, that's when they, they become hot and warm. Look it up. Light in space is cold until it comes through our atmosphere. Upon penetrating our atmosphere, now you have heat. So... This light generating heat 
is what structures the water in the cells. 42% of infrared, 42% of the radiation from the sun reaches us as infrared. That infrared is what structures the water in the cells. Pass that up here. That right there, mirror. Them, that, yeah. So, this right here is one of my favorite toys. Because it's a cell. I'm going I'm to I, I, I'm let you hold it. You can hold it and take a picture or whatever. It's a cell. It's a model. So you open it up. And it's got all of the parts to a cell label. But, just like all of the science textbooks, they forget the most important part, which is the water. So when you go through all of the biology, biochemistry textbooks, they leave water out. As if anything in your body can function dry. Nothing in your body can function dry. But they leave the water out. So right here, they leave the water out. They, they just give you cytoplasm right here, but they don't, they don't give it to you in its full magnitude because this is actually very close to how cells are. Cells are gel. And that's what's holding the cell together. It's a gel, just like Jello, like Bill Cosby. Jello. It's wiggly, it's soft, it's wet, it's juicy, but it's like a solid thing. So this is how cells really are. And it's infrared heat, which is a form of light that structures plain water into cellular water. And I try to I realized it was a gap because, you know, black folks, we always looking to hustle something. You know what I'm saying? So the moment I start telling people about structured water, people start talking about structured water, structured water, structured water. Everybody's selling structured water. I'm like, man. They can say alkaline water, everybody got alkaline water. Structure water, everybody's selling structure water. I'm like, what is this shit? Then I'm talking to the people that's selling it, and they don't even know what it is. I tell people all the time, the water we sell structures water. Mom Atomics structures water. But you can't be selling liquid water and saying it's structured water because it's not structured water. It would be like a gel, like ketchup. It would be thick, like jello. So I think we forget that our body's job is to structure the water. So it's not to buy. That's the same thing we do with meat. Your DNA's job is to synthesize the proteins your body needs. Not for you to go out and look to try to buy the protein already made and eat that. No. Cow body is synthesized by the cow's DNA to function for whatever the cow needs. Your DNA is going to tell your RNA how to put together your amino acids and whatever for you. So, I'm looking at this and I'm like, okay, so I'm getting this. Okay, so we got the musical scale. Check. We got the vibration or the sounds being transformed into light. The light producing heat. That heat structuring the water. Inside structured water, you have. Uh, In times past, and see, this is, this is the, the thing which you got to try to do when you're looking at ancient, how they, how they view things. 
we got to try to overlay the new language onto the old language. So they would call it living waters or spirit in the water, something to that effect. Today they're saying now it's coherent zones of the water. There's a coherent zone in structured water. That coherent zone in structured water creates pools of free electrons. So now, what do we call a coherent pool of electrons operating together? Plasma. See, that's another little part to the, to the inky vision that always had me going because I always liked science. I always viewed science as a hobby of mine. But one of the things that bothered me was in school they would say 99.999% of the universe is plasma. 0.1% is matter. And then all the books and everything would be about the matter. I'm like, yo, so... I'm sorry. So are we going to get to the other stuff or are we just going to do the point one? Is, any, is anyone on the other stuff? Well, yeah, look, later on, maybe we mental note to self. Find out what this plasma thing is later on. So I start looking everywhere to figure that out. And then I find out I got me some too. Like, hmm, I got some plasma. Okay. Then I start looking deeper, and I'm like, wow, plasma's all over the body. Then I go even deeper, and I'm like, nothing in the body functions if this plasma's not there. Cytoplasm in the cell, pleurisy fluid around the lungs, the fluid in the ear, the, the, the ventricles. Are, if this fluid's missing, that body part's not going to function. So I'm like, hmm, note to self. Plasma just might be the star of the show. So, uh, and, and that's the whole thing. You got liquid, solid, gas, plasma, right? And the only difference really is the state of how the electrons move. Fractions in the eye correspond to bacterial cell replication. Now, that may not mean much until you figure out Wait a minute. The centerpiece of the cell is mitochondria. An ancient bacteria. There'll be no organized life without this ancient bacteria. So when these fractions now tell me how bacteria replicate, and I'm saying, hmm, do I go with the Egyptologist and say it's just a coincidence? That the eye of Heru, a.k.a. the seat of creation and whoop, 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 talks about bacterial or gives the math to bacterial cell replication and the centerpiece of cellular replication is bacteria. Another mystery. I like to dig into unsolved mysteries. That's my thing. You know, I think a lot of people spend too much time in our community, especially regurgitating what someone else has already done. Why? Now, if you're going to add something to it, a new perspective, I can dig it. But otherwise, we already got that guy. You got to try to dig into some areas that are unexplored. And as much talk as we do about this Ankh, very few people understand it. Very few people understand it. In fact, there is, if you look it up right now, Google it. There's no definition for the Ankh. There's no standard of what the Ankh represents. Period. So me... I sat down to really get to the bottom of it 
And, you know, there are a couple of good books out on it. Uh, one of them by a brother from Brooklyn, which I really love. I forced my children to read it. Um, he's got some really good stuff in there, but... Mm. When I look this one up, because that's another thing. When you look at Ankhs, a lot of them look different. This is actually a real Ankh taken out of a tomb. One of the oldest. And so I look, and immediately I notice, at least for me, that this looks like two separate things put together. If we remove this. And she's removed this guy. And immediately what pops out is a jet pillar superimposed on top of, right? I believe you asked this question about. So um, it was about everlasting life. And they would put like the pharaohs and some of the royalty, they would have their names inscribed in shins, etc., etc. When you look at the shin, um, not only do you see a circuit immediately, but it's a, a top-down view of how your nuclear DNA actually looks because we get this picture of the winding staircase, but your DNA never really looks like that. Maybe 1% of the time out of your life, the DNA actually looks like a winding staircase. And that's only when it's methylated. Most times, your DNA is tied up around your histones. So when you talk about nuclear DNA telling RNA what to build in the terms of the structures of your body, these guys are the stars of the show. Your histones. And they had a lovely story. And it, it was it's, it's just amazing how the story just kind of opened up for me. Um, they talk about the hidden one. Right? The hidden one being Atum, right? Sometimes it's a, a, a different deity, but it's the hidden one, right? That's, that's the important part. Because this is actually in the ancient text. The hidden one created four sets of twins. And those four sets of twins governs all of, bio, all of physical creation. So now... I look at this and I immediately see the histones, DNA round around it. I'm jumping around the house screaming like, oh, this is crazy. So then I look deeper into it and sure enough, this, you see this, this looking like a tie at the bottom of the shin where it looks like it's tied. It has eight strands usually. Eight strands usually, right? That's actually a H1 histone. So I'm like, wait a minute. The text said hidden one. And I look in the biology textbook and it says H1 histone. That H1 histone created four sets of identical histones which wrap your DNA around it. I said, wow. I think we're missing a whole area of science here. So then I start looking to see if anybody's looking at the metal nature and Kemet or, or any kind of way to see if they're looking to see biological applications, medicinal applications, whatever the case may be. And lo and behold, I find out there's a Rothschild, I forgot his name, he put like $50 million dollars and created a brand new science around it called biosemiotics. Which is the science of how you encode multiple levels of information into pictures. And so they see that when you unpack a lot of the stories that come out of Kemet, it's actually quantum science and biology. So I'm looking at the Shin. Um, and when you look in the cell, you have the nucleus usually portrayed as the head of the cell body because the instructions for the structure of the body come from there. Um, 
And that right there is very, it just mimics, like the whole body is based on a fractal pattern. So we'll, we'll get to that. Um, but you look at the brain and how the brain interfaces with the mind. The brain is not the mind, but the brain interfaces with the mind. Same thing with nuclear DNA. Most of the information that gets to the histones comes via the water, obviously, is sitting in, but it's transferred from your mitochondria. That's where the storehouse of your DNA is. You have a zillion times more DNA stored in your mitochondria. Most of the active fragments of your nuclear DNA come from the mitochondria. All of the energy that animates the body. So when we talk about spirit, that's what the mitochondria would be, right? So, um, just park that, right? Um, now we talk about the jet pillar, right? That's the body of the cell. So you guys got a cell right there. You can see. The body of the cell generates the electricity. Inside the larger body, that's your spine and your heart. Right? It's your electricity that's constantly being generated that maintains your magnetic field or what you call your mind. So just different language. We could say ba, ka, etc. But science has proven a zillion times that the only place you can store information in is a magnetic field. All the way down to your debit card. They put the chip on it, but you still got to have the black strip on there to store the information on the card. They're putting the chip on there now because they're accessing the information via the internet. So the information is not on the card anymore. But this black strip is where your information is stored, which is why if something happens to the black strip on your card, you can't use it anymore. The capacitor. Now, we know the body's electric, but we don't get too deep into how that really works in the body. And I'm not going to go into a whole diatribe, but the capacitor is the basic biological unit. An uh, insulator between two conductors. Why? Because that's how you generate electric current. So anywhere you look, you see that. If you look at a cell membrane, a lot of times people talk about the jet pillar in the spine, but that's everywhere. Every membrane of every cell you got is fat and protein put together. That's what minerals do. Minerals catalyze the energy. So, I know y'all in your mind like, well, I thought this was getting simpler. It's going to get simpler soon. Simple's coming. So, the inner workings of the body can be simplified. Yesterday's alchemy is today's biochemistry simple no more no less now your body is an acid structure that runs on electrons your body is an acid structure that runs on electrons your body is a acid structure that runs on electrons okay a lot of people say this word and they don't know why they're saying it. Most people are saying it because everyone else is saying it. Alkaline. I'm on alkaline diet. Alkaline, alkaline, alkaline. Like, what does that mean? It means it's healthy. Like, well, you know, it doesn't mean it's healthy. It does mean it's healthy, but that's not exactly what alkaline means. Right? So, a few important things come from understanding that your body's an acid structure. That means your body requires a base... Because that's what alkaline means, base. Fuel source, an alkaline fuel source. What does that mean? Acid is something that steals or consumes electrons or electricity. Base or alkaline is something that donates 
electrons or electricity. So because my body's made out of acid and I need electricity, electrons, I have to feed it things that give away their electrons. So that's where alkaline diet comes into play. But the reason why I, I feel that now people need clarity and understanding on it is because a lot of us have structural damage to our bodies. To regenerate and rebuild and repair your body, you're going to need to rebuild it by concentrating on what type of acid you're putting in your body. All of your hormones. The men turned into girls. The girls turning into men. That's hormone issues. Your hormones are protein. Those are strings of amino acids, peptides and proteins. We talk about melanin all the time. Melanin is a protein. It's a string of amino acids. What type are we supposed to put in our body? Where do we get them from? Why are vegans so sick still? Because they're avoiding them. They think they don't need them. No. If the structure of your body is not sound, you putting the cart before the horse worried about what you're eating. Being alkaline. Oh, uh, pH. No, it's a, a million pH. A million pH, you'd be dead. Your body don't want pH to be... No, your blood is supposed to be 7.365. That's neutral. That's ma'at. Balance. Right? So, it requires an alkaline fuel, fuel source. Now, a couple other things come out of this. If the body's electric... Anytime you have electricity being produced, you have radiation. That means light. So your body produces light. It's not spiritual. It's not spooky. Well, it is spiritual, but it's not spooky. It's not pseudo. It's not weird science. It's just a fact. Anytime you have electricity being produced, you have radiation given off. Whether it's visible radiation or not, still light nonetheless. Same thing with magnetism. Anytime you have an electric current, you're going to have a magnetic field. Period. To be coherent, the acids would need to be arranged in a fractal periodic pattern. What does that mean? Crystal. That's all. Every working protein in your body, whether it's a bone, a hormone, your skin, pigment, your eyelash. It's a crystal structure. Otherwise, the electron, the electricity wouldn't be able to move through it properly. All right? So that means from everything from bone to fascia. How many people know what that is? Fascia. Everybody. One person. Where, how do you know about that word? Okay. <laughs> Anatomy and physiology class. So most of us have no idea what this is. And so I realized I had to bring this back to conversation. Because I'm in the house. And I stumped my house with it. I was like, hey, will you jump up and down? How come your organs don't go like this? You know what, Dad? That's a good question. I was like, what's holding your heart in place? Like, when you, you do a cartwheel, does your heart go into the top of your skull and then down to your feet? Like, no, you have tape, basically. Fascia is like tape. You got four types of fascia, but the biggest is like double-sided tape. Then you have less elastic, a little bit smaller, less elastic, a little bit smaller, till you get to almost like fibers. Yeah. It's, wait, wait. It's really like, seriously, I'm, I'm glad you said that. Because one of, one of the best ways I like how Africa communicated and taught electromagnetism 
was the story of Anansi. Anansi's the sp a spider. And the story goes, Anansi is the oldest god or something or other. And um, all the information in the world basically comes from Anansi. And it's talking about electromagnetism. And when you look at, um, I did a couple of lectures. I had the um, actual, what a magnetic field looks like. It actually looks like a spider with eight, you know, like it, it, it really looks just like a picture of a spider. If you just draw it with no body, like just the outline, the body, the little head, and then the, the eight arms coming off, and magnetic field. A-N-A-N-S-I. So if you draw if you draw the magnetic field, you're really looking like a body of a spider. So it's impossible for them to have known what a magnetic field looks like to be able to or, or have to have not known what a magnetic field looks like and to come up with that story. But we gotta understand that they use mnemonic devices to teach. So everything was about taking complicated science and making it super simple so you could teach the children and you would teach the children the story in a way where they would always remember it. and then as they got more information you could lay the heavier parts to the story on top of it um, but yes it's just like a web all the way through the body all the way up into the brain I like how you function he be pulling it right up like hold on Let's see if the minister bullshitting. <laughs> um, so, um, all of these are arranged in the molecular structure of them are all crystal. That means periodic repeating patterns. Right? So, everything that's living is made out of the same blueprint. Periodic patterns. And I'm like, wait a minute. We heard of that before. Periodic. Periodic table. Hmm. I'm just going to put that on the side over there. So, next key. Acid structural system. Right? Acid structural system. Carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen. What is that? Carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen. What do those four things together make? Protein. <laughs> hydrogen and oxygen, water. Wait, where we at? Hydrogen and oxygen makes water. You add some carbon. You have a carbohydrate. So now you got fruits and veggies. You add some nitrogen. You got protein. Right? So that's the centerpiece for your structural system. Skin, nails, teeth, bones, etc. Your energy system, right? Because we forget about that. All throughout science, we forget about that. Doctors don't even talk about that. People popping up with fibromyalgia and stuff. I don't know what's... I don't know. But we're so used to them saying they don't know. It's, it fits right in with everything else. Oh, you don't know? Okay, cool. What drugs do I get? Take three of those and then if that doesn't work, just come back, we'll change it. Don't worry about it. Like, oh, okay. That's why this is called practice. You guys really are practicing on me. Okay. So your energy system though, you have an electromagnetic energy system, right? Because you can't have electricity without light and without magnetism. Right? So you have an electromagnetic energy system. All you do is replace the carbon with phosphorus. And now you have what? ATP. ATP. What does carbon do? Carbon binds elements together. Carbon binds elements together. It makes even things that are not tangible, tangible. This is why it's the centerpiece of your structural system. Phosphorus, right? Phosphorus is literally the light, the light-bearing element. 
it does the same thing that carbon does, but with energy. And then what, what do you see in there? Horus. Man. Like, hmm. So in my mind, you know, my, my mind work. I'm back to that eye of Horus again. The eye of Horus. I'm like, okay. There we go. Just let that do what it do. Right? But wherever you see that, phosphorus in your body, no light production. Right? And what did we talk about earlier? Sound through a piezoelectric crystal makes light. Light inside of biology, infrared, heat, structures the water. So now, what's the other thing that we need in our bones besides calcium? Phosphorus. Right, so there you go. Now you know what's playing a big role in the light production inside your number one piezoelectric crystal. Right? So then you have your nuclear DNA, your mitochondrial DNA. Since nothing in the body functions dry, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, we talked about that. Plasma being the centerpiece, and last but not least, uh, mitochondria functioning as a super enzyme to speed up the rate that cells can structure water. Right? Because that's the definition of enzyme. It's a protein. Mitochondria is also protein that speeds up. It catalyzes a, a reaction or slows down, antagonizes. So it speeds something up or slows it down. So amongst all the other things that mitochondria does, it also speeds up the rate at which our cell structures water because it releases infrared light into the cytoplasm, right? Now, don't wait to the end and bring me back to these slides like, wait. On the first slide, you said, ask your questions as they come. Um, so, alchemy, right? Turning base metals into gold. Base metals, right? Base metals, base metals. When I tell you I read every single thing on earth on alchemy, like literally, there's nothing you could imagine. I'm talking about, I, I, I almost had a plane ticket to Nicholas Flamel house. Like everything imaginable on alchemy, I read it. Um, and I realized <laughs> the whole science of alchemy was, it, it just took me right back to the haves and the have nots in Kemet. You had a system for the wealthy in the system for the poverty, the, the, the masses. There was a science to the way they kept that away from the masses. That's all. So that's where you got the complications, but alchemy was biochemistry. That's all it ever was. And turning base metals into gold, that's your base minerals. Remember, metals in your body are minerals. Iron is a metal, but you still need that for your blood. Right? All of these things are metals, but they, they're minerals in your body. So when you talk about gold, gold just means functioning, something functioning at an antioxidant level. Because the, the beauty about gold is that it doesn't oxidize. Right? So metals in the form of minerals serve a few key functions. Catalyst for amino acid function. So your hormones, your enzymes, your pigments, etc., they can't function without minerals in them or around them. So if the mineral is in the structure of the amino acids, whether it be in the form of an enzyme, etc., that's an electric relationship. If it's outside, it's a magnetic relationship. All right? But minerals catalyze the action. Um, these scientists just got... Man, we really got to get our stuff together. But they just got a heap of money. A heap of money for... Um, 
being able to reproduce, I forget the name of the enzyme, but the enzyme takes light and uses that light to produce ammonia from nitrogen. And basically, um, I mean, it's so simple. They just put um, molybdenum. It's three minerals they put together. Light hits it in the presence of nitrogen, produces ammonia. So it's a big thing now to re-revolutionize re the way fertilizers produce whoop de -whoop. I'm like, yo, we could be getting this money. This is crazy, right? Um, and they're just getting it from your biology, though. It's not like it's somewhere super deep. They just, as they study in you, you know, because we go to the hospital, we don't care about none of the stuff we leave there. We sign off tissues, blood, whatever. Women have babies. Take it all, doc. I don't care. I just want the baby. All the tissue. We ain't learned nothing from Henrietta Lacks yet. So they just studying our little material left. And woo, 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 woo. New billion, quadrillion dollar process. Anyway, so metals also function as carriers for electricity in the body or conductors. All right? So, oh, here you go. Um, this is what we need to be paying attention to. Nitrogen, sulfur, and carbon. Nitrogen, sulfur, and carbon. Why is that important? Nitrogen, sulfur, and carbon. Most people are anemic. Most people are so anemic that anemic has become almost unimportant, like a common cold. Oh, I got a cold. I'm anemic. Girls think it's cute. <laughs> well, I be getting cold because I'm anemic. Like, it's not cute. What the hell is wrong with you? You to get your life together. That means you don't have any iron in your heme. Your heme is not just your blood, but it's, it's the proteins that carries the electricity around your mitochondria. That's your electron transport chain. So they say electron transport chain as the new thing from the older term, which was cytochrome. And before cytochrome, it was cellular pigment, cyto, cell, chrome, pigment. So they're moving you away from this idea that all life revolves around pigment. See, this is why you had to be moved away from the idea that light is the whole basis of health and longevity. Because what harnesses the light? Pigments. This is why your, your body's waters use oils or fats. Because fats can hold pigments. So the body uses waters. Well, the body is water. So water uses oils. <laughs> oils hold the pigments. The pigments interact with the light. Right? But these guys... destroy the iron in the body. So here's another reason why you don't necessarily want to be doing a lot of meat. Because all meat, meat is the number one source of nitrogen in your diet. We would say, oh, well, you know. So what does that mean, though? I don't know what that means. That means that you're going to overwhelm your liver, kidney, bladder, urinary system with ammonia. They're like, oh, I still don't know what that means, minister. That means you're going to be on dialysis soon. This is why we're propping up the dialysis market. Because we're not getting this little, al the real alchemy. Yes, but the nitrogen usually 
is coupled with oxygen. And it depends on how much is in there. So a lot of people, when they ask me what and what not to eat, I take a lot of stuff like broccoli and Brussels sprouts off of the food list. I tell them, don't eat those things. It's too much nitrogen. Now, for my athletes that want to know how to maintain their muscle, because they work out, they have a broccoli, Brussels sprouts, etc., etc. Because depending on how you live determines how, how your biochemistry functions in your body. So that's a good question. How active you are determines what happens with what you put in your body. So, if you don't exercise at all, sedentary lifestyle, or very little exercise, all that nitrogen is going to become ammonia in your body. If you do exercise and you're getting sun, not natural fake lights, but actual sun, that nitrogen is going to be VA. And the, so it's a part of the... So even now, what we're getting from the... Uh, the screens on the laptops, plasma TVs, the blue light. The synthetic blue light killing us. Blue light is part of the sun. So you say, well, if it's killing us, we've been getting it from the sun. And we're only getting it alone. At, at higher than 20 times the amount of what we get from the sun. See, it was coupled with red light, which balances the blue light. So it's, it's the, the whole blend. So none can replace that blend. Not even full spectrum light. So you gotta, you just gotta figure it out. Remember, I'm learning this stuff while I'm working 12, 13 hours a day of Verizon. So you just gotta say, okay, you know, and just start looking at your boss, supervisor, and them folks. Like, mm, you got one more time, buddy. Cause I'm, I'm, I'm putting this thing together. So I, I'm gonna transition up out of here, and you just do what you can do. Lunch break, go get you whatever you can get. You know, before you go in, depending on your schedule, off days, make sure you make up for the on days. So now we try to work out. We still do the gym, and the gym is a death trap, right? Nothing but blue lights, air condition, you know, which is Freon, recirculating the, the dirty air that we didn't all breathe, you know, it's, but there's a lot of things in the gym you need to get the full workout. So we mix that up with working out on the track at least three, four days a week, too. So we out there in the sun. And then outside that, we make sure we go outside, backyard, run, whatever the case may be. You just got to get it in. Quick question. Can your body store the sun? If that makes sense because we here in Chicago and we... I'm in the D. Well, you're in the deep, so you are, like, yeah, it's like, ugly. Yeah, that's it. So you, there's no like. We got we we don't belong up here. <laughs> Listen, because we're humans and we so advanced, we just start being so arrogant, doing all kinds of everything. Like, good example. Going back to the debate thing, right? Plant-based people use this in an argument all the time. Like, we refer back to the animals. We're like, oh, well, the gorillas. and woo -woo. But there's no plant-based diet-having animal that eats every single plant. Like, we just don't have rules. Like, we're just arrogant. Like, we're supposed to do everything. Because we're humans and we can do it, we will do it. So, because we can live everywhere or we can survive anywhere then we'll just live anywhere but that's not necessarily thriving we're just surviving but every other living creature knows this is where you belong at you supposed to be around here black folks we're supposed to be around the equator so that's what this is coming from the book called eat right for your haplotype right so hopefully we can a learn how we're supposed to eat but also b Put together this long-term hustle about eating right for your blood type. That is the most craziest foolishness I ever heard. So, nitrogen um, speeds up the oxidation process for iron. So, the more ammonia you have circulating in the body, the more you're going to lose iron. Sulfur, 
especially sulfur in the presence of oxygen, speeds up the process of oxidizing iron, right? Carbon, especially in the presence of oxygen, speeds up the presence of oxidizing iron. Now, can we get away from some of these things? No. We breathe in nitrogen, sulfur is in all of the vegetation, and carbon, forget about it. Carbon, especially the worst type of carbon, carbon in the presence of what? Oxygen. Carbon dioxide, right? We breathe in oxygen, we, we circulate in the carbon dioxide, where? It's the iron that has to carry it back to the lungs to get rid of it. So your iron has to constantly be replaced. Don't listen to nobody tell you nothing else crazy, right? But zinc and copper. Now, where did I learn about zinc and copper? From a health... Nope. Study in metallurgy. They use zinc and copper to stop the oxidation process of iron. So they fortify the iron with zinc and copper. I was like, man... <laughs> I just heard the Wu-Tang song playing in the back of my mind. Can it be that it was all so simple then? I was like, man. That took a whole bunch of work and just... So, iron is the key in turning electrons into light uh, via your heme groups, whether it's your red blood cells or your respiratory pigment, cytochromes, or your electron transport chain. Come on, Tom. Amino acids. So if you notice, we're going through those groups to give clarity, right? Go, go, go back a few. One more. That's for you, Tom. Oh, that's mine too. Right, so if you notice, we're going through these to try to give some clarity. All right, so... Amino acids, they have to be arranged in a periodic structure in order to be coherent or function in your body, right? So that means that you have a crystal city. A crystal city inside your body. So amino acids create a crystal city that requires electrons, typo, to radiate but need a constant source of electrons to run through its matrix. That's where your alkaline or base foods enter the picture. All right? But here's the key. The diet, going back to your question, this is the important part. The diet is only as a substitute for light. <laughs> Plus, I, I like to let time go by so it can sink in. The diet is only as a substitute for light. All of biology is based around this one fact. Your life is physically built on this principle. The way your life, your body is structured and made. That's the reason why it's made and designed this way. To harness light. So when you get to mitochondria. Because people, they get it twisted with the food thing. So like, well, I'm on this and this and that. And I switched from this. I was pescatarian. Now I'm vegetarian. I'm about to be a vegan. I'm thinking about going paleo. Like, That's it. And only certain foods can do that. Not 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 necessarily only certain foods, but our our haplotype. And you and I break it down into two basic groups. Polar bodies and equatorial. Either you from a polar region. North or south, same thing, or you're from the equator. Simple as that. And where you're from, your bloodline, not you specifically. So people are like, well, I'm from the Bronx. No, no, no. 
where your bloodline is from determines how your mitochondria function, how efficient they are. How efficient your mitochondria function determines what you need to eat to complement that. Because we need the same amount of electron, we need that electricity regardless. So, if I have a body that's not good at converting light into electricity, then I need to put an electron dense diet in, which is not what you think. Because the most electron dense food matter to eat is fat. Fat is the most electron dense food. If I come from an equatorial region and my body is the best light converting phenomena in the universe, then I need to eat things that just enhance my ability to convert light into electrons, which is where the plants come in. Because the plants supply our body with aromatic amino acids, which we don't produce. This is why you got so many niggas running around crazy in the street. Because 90% of our neurotransmitters and neurohormones are made in our, from our diet. So people are like, Minister, when are you going to talk about mental health? I'm like, I've been talking about mental health the whole time. If you don't eat right, you can't think. You, you can't think right. It's impossible. You can't do it. You don't have the material. People running around talking about their pineal gland on Burger King. Huh? It's no, it's no tryptophan inside the double Big Mac. No tryptophan, no serotonin. No serotonin, no melatonin. No melatonin, no pineal function. What happened? Oh, no, nah, brother, we, we getting deep. Okay. You getting dead, nigga. You ain't getting deep. Right? So, this is the key. We got to complement our body. Depending on our body structure is depending on how we're supposed to eat. Now, eating a lot of fat comes with a, a lot of residue. And if our bodies are not made to take on all of that fat, it's going to create problems for us. So we talked about this. Water uses oils and fats to hold pigments to interact with light. Oils, fats, hormones, pigments, etc. are periodic acid structures which make them biological crystals. So your health comes down to two things. The ability to convert light into these basic types of information and how you maintain them, right? And your structural center is the nucleus of the cell with your nuclear DNA. Your energetic or spiritual system is your mitochondrial DNA or your mitochondria. The illusion of structure. Nuclear DNA creates all the structure in the body. The energy that animates that structure comes from mitochondria. The information comes from the light via the structured water and the histones. Now, this is very important. I probably need to do a whole lecture just on it, but I'm going to have a section of the book and go into it deeper. I went into it pretty uh, deep, though, in my I King book. So, and I got a couple of those videos still up. This structure, this hexagon, right? This is also a hexagram, right? But that's another conversation. But this hexagon is the structure, shape. See, this is sacred geometry. That's why we did sacred geometry. It wasn't like a weird thing where we, like, you know, mm, sacred geometry was to understand science. If you understand the shape of a thing, you understand how energy moves in that thing. So you understand the shape, then you understand the function. Hexagons allow 
us to interact with light. So aromatic amino acids all have this same shape. Most times in science it's called a benzene ring. All right? It's the same hexagonal shape. It's the same shape of structured water molecules. So this is, this is how water molecules look in that gel pattern in your cell, in your cytoplasm. Right? This is, this is the key to understanding how we get the light to move through our bodies. Um, the number one aromatic amino acid is tyrosine. Right? What does tyrosine do? Tyrosine is at cytochrome 1 to transmit the electron all the way through. Tyrosine makes all of your nuclear, um, nuclear, all of your, um, your neuromelanin. Tyrosine makes your external melanin. Tyrosine is what allows your body to be anabolic or alkaline, build, regenerate itself. Well, yes, but they have a, a pathway. It's called the, uh, I always butcher these scientific terms. It's called the Shiki Mate or Shiki Maat pathway. S-H-I-K-I-M-A-T-E, I believe, which is the pathway for how plants produce the aromatic amino acids. So this is the reason why we have to eat the plants. So I've had some smart, so and sometimes questions, people be trying to stump you, but I like the question. They're like, well, um, why don't we just live off of sunshine then? I'm like, eh, it doesn't work that easy. You actually have to eat the plants in order to be able to use the sunshine. So if you don't eat the plants, you won't have the aromatic amino acids in your body that allow your body to harness the sunlight in the first place. I mean, you get certain things like you convert cholesterol into vitamin D. So there's so many different things the sun does for you, but you're not going to be overall healthy, period. Because every day, your cells are dying and need to be replaced. Every day, the proteins that your body uses burns out and need to be replaced. So you have to have new material on hand all the time to replace them. That's why I was saying you can't neglect either side of your diet. You have to eat for the structural integrity of your body and you also have to eat for the energetic part of your body. So when you eat for the energetic part of your body, that's your alkaline diet. You got to feed yourself electron donors so that you have a lot of bioelectricity, healthy. But knowing that all of your cells get turned over on a regular basis, how do you replace them? Because all of your cells are made out of fatty acids and proteins. You got to put those in your diet. A lot of people get horrible fats, even vegans. They don't eat healthy fats. Outside of avocados, we lost. We think because we use olive oil or coconut oil and we fry stuff in it, like that's good. No. Because it doesn't matter what oil you use, once you fry it past the smoke point, it becomes rancid. It's the same as canola. Every oil has a smoke point, which is how much heat you can add to it before it loses its molecular structure. And once it loses that, it loses all the benefits that you can Google. You know what I'm saying? So everything is based on light transfer and how we store that in the body. Even the integrity of your water, which is the basis of your health. Metabolism. 7.365. Easy way to remember that? Seven days a week, 365 days a year. So, in a world of consciously awake atheists, people say, Minister, how do you believe in God? Things like this. My blood, your blood, has to be right at 7.365 pH. It just so happens to be the days in the week and days in the year. Eh, too big of a coincidence for me. I'm saying.
Not trying to convert y'all. But this is what your pH needs to be. Now, the acid alkaline scale goes from 1 to 14. This is neutral, just over neutral. All right? And you have the original definition for pH being potence, a German word for power of hydrogen. Um, now sometimes you see parts hydrogen or potential hydrogen. It's really just measuring your hydrogen activity in your blood. Fine. In these conditions, the body should have a steady source of electrons to produce a steady amount of structured water ad infinitum. Now, for clarity, I realize that we may not all be there. All the food that we eat goes to our mitochondria. Right? So I'm a, I, got, I got that coming up in maybe a slide or two. We, we almost finished. But proteins get converted to fats, fats get converted to sugar, sugar get converted to acid, acids get converted to electrons. This is, this is, this is the way everything goes. Everything eventually winds up in your Krebs cycle or tricarboxylic acid cycle or your citric acid cycle. Three different names, same process. Everything winds up there, no matter if you eat a steak, a kale, whatever. So this is why it comes down really to electromagnetism because everything is converted to electrons anyway. It's just about how efficient the conversion process is. How much residue is going to be left throughout the... They have people that come and design their house. Interior decorators decorate with feng shui in mind, not colors and, and what matches the drapes. How energy is going to move through here. How the sunlight is going to hit your living room and how it's going to hit your kitchen and how that's going to affect the foods and how much flies will you have in the summertime versus... So, differences in mitochondria, all right? Polar differences. Uh, the mitochondrial respiratory proteins are larger and more spaced away from each other, all right? Combined with more sulfathiols present in the body and the cell. That means more wear and tear. So that means they degrade faster, all right? This is a major determining factor of the pigmentation of the body and mitochondria function as they break down the iron of all your body's heme groups. So, what does this mean? The lighter you are, the more iron you need in your diet. And I had a, uh, I had a sister hit me up on Instagram. She said, well, Minister, you know, you talk a lot about black folks only. Do you, you don't help white folks? I was like, of course. So she booked a consultation with me, and we went through a whole bunch of stuff. And at the end of it, I was like, listen, this is what I want you to do. Because she's a vegan. But she was struggling with some stuff. I said, this is what I want you to do. I want you to start eating a little piece, like just maybe an ounce of raw or, or medium rare steak, like once a week. She was like, what? I was like, look, just try it out. After two months, she hit me up and she said she never felt better. I said, I know. You needed that. You needed that. She said, yeah, but I thought vegan was the best. I said, no, there's no such, there's really no such thing as best. It's best for me, but best for me is not best for you. Yeah. You, need a, you might need a little bit of that raw meat because it's going to bring in a different way to process the minerals, fats, it's going to speed up. It's, it's the reason why we don't process milk well. We don't have the enzymes to break down those things. But they need that a little bit. It's not wrong. It's just different. Can I ask you a question? Because um, a lot of us were black, right? I'm black. But going to my history. Oh, yeah. We all, we all over the place. Yes. Does that count? Does that it, it, it really does. And this is why I try to give the information in the way that I do so that we can, 
we can, we can make our body our laboratories at home so that we have both sides of the coin. Like, hmm, okay, this, this and this works, but I'm going to try this. And if this is not working, then I'm going to back off this and bring in a little bit of that. And I'm going to see what works for me. You know, but you have to really be pushing your body. A lot of times, um, people have certain issues, and because mainstream has sold us the idea of pill and the quick fix, we'll move away from the Western modality, move into a more natural modality, and look for a quick fix. So sometimes it's just that we don't give it enough time. So we got to give it time. You know, I tell people all the time, like, listen, it takes your body four months to make new blood. Your blood is going to make all your tissues and organs and everything else new again. But if it just, but the, the quickest turnover is blood. And that's four months. So it's impossible to fix anything really in less than four months because you just got new blood. So that means if I pick up a new diet today, it's going to be at least four months before my blood reflects my new dietary regimen. Because otherwise, if, if, I, if I just quit eating meat today, and in two weeks I'm like, well, I'm not really feeling it. Technically, 90% of my blood is still based on that old eating habit. I only got two weeks worth of new blood cells that's reflecting that new... So... It's, it takes really like three years, depending on how active you are, to replace all the cells in your body. So literally, nobody is really older than three years old. Because your cells are always replacing themselves. So that's another thing. It's like your body is never older than three years, and your mind never ages. Why are we dying again? Hmm. It's a good question. It's a good question. Cells always replace themselves. My mind never ages, but somehow I keep looking different. And there's a point where I'm looking better, I'm looking better, I'm looking better, and then mm, looking worse, I'm looking worse. I'm getting slower. I'm feeling weaker. My hands don't, like the pull-ups are not really happening right now. Like, we just go backwards. We don't get it. You know, there's certain things that's going on. The histones are usually overwhelmed with chemicals because most of the chemicals in the food, like your brother was asking earlier, they usually target the histones. And so when the histones can't relay the information to the DNA, the DNA relays incomplete information to the RNA, and then you get poor replication process, so now you get structural mistakes. So now you got a little wrinkle here. Now you got a little. And that same process happens on the inside with our muscles, our liver. Because we forget. When we think about muscles, we forget your liver is a muscle. Your heart is a muscle. So, so equatorial uh, mitochondria, more light. All right? And not just more light production, but you need more light. You have to have it. Okay? So that means if we have the most optimal diet on earth and we're not getting any light, we will still be sick. Yes, that is correct. Light is the key. All right? Now... Um, what do we do if we in Detroit or Chicago or New York and our light is limited? We have to work on more efficient conversion of the light. So that's one of the things that I sat down to make the momatomics with in mind. Like, okay, so the pigments, the aromatic amino acids, okay, bam, let me... Because I was one of those people, as I started to learn about, I was buying all kinds of minerals and then getting this and that. I'm like, wait a minute. Minerals don't even function like this in the body. 
no mineral fun like there's nowhere in the body where it's just like calcium just doing something by itself calcium has to be with a host of other minerals other enzymes this is why when you have the plant or the herb you not only have the mineral but you have the rest of the plant that has the stuff that's required for the body to metabolize that nutrient that's a key part so you have that in the mama Thomas. You don't not you, you not only have the the minerals, but you have the stabilized oxygen. You have the heavy hydrogen, which is no longer present in the oceans, which is what our cells were built around. It wasn't the regular type of hydrogen. Every single element on the periodic table has different isotopes, and heavy hydrogen was once the major source of hydrogen all around due to pollution which me I might just be one of those people I don't think it's accidental every so often years we have this big oil spill in the ocean whatever the case may be that might just be me though but so it's in there the aromatic amino acids they're in there so all those things were put in there to increase the conversion of light to electricity in your body so that makes us photovoltaic we're not plants. We don't do photosynthesis. Plants do the photosynthesis. That's why we eat plants. If we were plants, we wouldn't need to eat plants. All right? That's what they do. They take the carbon, which is the binding element, bind up that hydrogen and that solar energy, and make crystals so that we can eat those. That's what a sugar is, natural sugar, right? So that's how we do that. We maximize on the conversion process. Um, but make no mistake, both groups are tied to light conversion. Only polar groups are built to better supplement the lack of light with fats, which provide the highest amount of electrons via food, i.e. raw meat. Break that, um, break that down a little bit. Polar groups, because their bodies are not built with the pigment or the pigment support structures, they can live without high amounts of light. Their natural diet is designed around that. They have enzymes to break down all those fats. Their body can handle a much higher amount of ammonia than yours can. So we cannot follow everything Dr. Oz say and think we're going to be good. Dr. Oz is speaking to the larger market and he's speaking to his family. We was in the spa, looking around the spa, it's amazing. Them folks that run the spa, King Spa, they're racist as ever. My children in the little bath part, they making noise, splashing water. They coming over quick. Hey, see, no noise. No noise. No noise. Look at the sign. Quiet, please. <laughs> then they stand in there. So I let them run wild a little bit longer. Take them out. Go with the girls. Then I go back. So I get in the steam room, relax. And guess what happens? This, I don't believe in coincidence. So it just, it just was for my eyes only. It's two little Korean children in there, and like a British uh, uh, little boy was in there. And this is not their fault, because they don't know no better than their children. They're doing the same damn thing, splashing, making noise, whoop, whoop, whoop. And I'm looking at the guy that came over and gave me all the warnings. I'm like, he just looking away. I'm like, Pfft. But I get it. He's just an employee. So somebody probably told him to come tell us something. And at the end of the day, I said, listen, we can't be mad at situations like that. We got to move out of that paradigm. They got to sit down. Sit your ass. That's how we got to understand it. We got to redirect our energy. It's like, oh, okay, I get it. It's your spot. You got it. Even though all through this spot, you got the pyramid, Osiris. The Egyptian thrones, you know what I'm saying? But that's how we got to redirect that energy. We just got to say, okay, we just got to build our joint. That's all. I ain't mad at you. 
We just got to build ours. It's yours, you know. All right, so we got like two or three more slides in this set. All right, so water. We got to get to water. Um, and this is just a piece from the book. All right, this is just a piece from the book. So obviously the book, book will come out. I'll do some more classes. Uh, the book was supposed to be out, so the pre-sale is still going for the book. But as I start, as I was writing the book, people start flooding me with more questions. And so I'm like, you know what? That should be in the book, okay? Give me a minute and I'll get right back to you. Um, so hydrogen is the first and most important element to life. However, we have a conundrum. Hydrogen is too light to remain in our atmosphere unbound to another element. So hydrogen by itself will float right out of the atmosphere. The element that binds to hydrogen the easiest and is most bioavailable also destroys our body's minerals and tissues. Oxygen. Which is why we can't keep these bodies going for long periods of time because we haven't mastered oxygen the way the ancient alchemists have. See, that's what, going back to the other slide, that's turning the base metals into gold. Gold doesn't oxidize. So when they were talking about that, they were talking about using, and this is why I did the, um, when I did the lecture and I did the periodic table, in the center of the periodic table, I call that like the chemetic section. Because you got Ray, Usir, Patar, right? And it's funny, because not only are those the chemetic names of deities, but that's the transition elements right there. And what makes those transition elements special is that they can all store more hydrogen than any of the other elements. With palladium being the number one. This is why evergreen trees are green all year long, even when it's cold. Like when the wintertime comes, most trees, the leaves turn colors and then fall off. Evergreen stay green all year long. Because the evergreen tree is loaded with palladium. Which is why the pollen they use for medicinal purposes, for potency, etc., etc. It's the palladium. See? This is these transition metals. Transition minerals. Gold and the platinum group metals. Palladium is a platinum group metal. All of those I use in the Mamatomics. I also found out that it's those same platinum group metals that facilitate thought and light transmission in the brain. Well, absolutely. The hypothalamus. The hypothalamus. The hypothalamus runs everything. The pineal just has super key functions. Like melatonin. Most people think about melatonin and they think about melatonin putting you to sleep at night. But that's melatonin functioning like how a, like a doctor does. You go to the doctor to get a surgery, they put you to sleep. So they could do their surgery. Melatonin puts you to sleep so that melatonin can repair your mitochondria. Melatonin repairs your mitochondria. So that's the link between pineal function and mitochondrial health. If your pineal is not functioning, your mitochondria is not going to be repaired well. So you're not going to have good mitochondrial function. Oh. So that's, that's the real purpose of melatonin. But melatonin is converted from serotonin. Serotonin is, comes from tryptophan. Tryptophan is one of those aromatic amino acids that we got to get in the diet from the plants. Those also play a key role in our moods, mood swings, and how we socialize with people. So people on Zoloft and all these kind of things instead of just changing their diet. 
neurochemistry is based on aromatic amino acids. All right? So we got to get those other or exotic minerals in to slow down the oxidation. All right? We look at stars in the sky. The reason stars last so long is because the hydrogen there is unbound to oxygen. Right? So that's, that's a key right there, just studying the stars. Fast running and overall larger number of mitochondria demand a higher number of hydrogen atoms to power ATP production. Right? It's the hydrogen atoms in the inner matrix and the outer matrix that spin the ATPase pump. Right? That spinning creates magnetic field, amongst other things. Um, but also your ATP production. People that can't sleep at night, right? ATP problem. And if you can't sleep at night, your whole circadian rhythm is going to be off, so your hormone production is going to be off. But that is mitochondria issue. Adenosine triphosphate. As we use adenosine triphosphate, it becomes adenosine diphosphate. Like we, we use up the phosphates. What's the phosphate? Phosphorus. So we're starting to see it. So we're using that phosphorus, right? That light. Once our body gets too loaded with adenosine and our mitochondria is unable to recycle it fast enough, that adenosine reaches the brain and serves as a chemical messenger all on its own and says, okay, time to go to sleep. Because we can't recycle the ATP. Then you go to sleep, release melatonin. Melatonin goes to mitochondria. Boop, 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 boop. Patch you back up. Now you're ready to start recycling ATP again. Ah, you're ready to go. So having a larger amount of mitochondria put us at a higher demand. Same thing for people that are athletic and then they stop working out. Every time you work out, you produce more mitochondria. You produce more mitochondria. Those mitochondria have to be maintained. When you stop the workout now, you have mitochondria just basically dying off in your cells. That right there is going to produce a source of inflammation. Correct. Now you're going to have lysosomes, lysozymes, white blood cells, the whole, the whole cannibal crew, they're going to be trying to break into the cell to remove these dead bacteria, so to speak, that's in the cell, and you can have any manner of autoimmune disease creep up, right? In the same fashion as a cell is a gel with a dense carbon fiber network to maintain its infrastructure. Your body being a copy has its own fiber network called the fascia, right? We talked about that. Dehydration destroys the fascia, all right? These are the muscles that they talk about in uh, martial arts. These are the other muscles. So when you see like a video of like a little skinny old martial arts master and he breaks like 50 boards and you're like where the hell did that because when you do a lot of isometrics you're working on the fascia and the fascia is there any way you can know whether or not your dehydration is or lords and folks right right what they got in yeah. Chicago same thing different name yeah. vice lords and Folks or whatever. Yeah. Poor fascia integrity and a weak liver. All right? So you have two aspects to it. Weak liver, meaning you can have a buildup of chylomicrons, the little fat cells that the liver is supposed to clean out of the blood. Those can produce uh, cellulite. Or twisting, double-sided tape, if it gets stuck together. Right? You're going to have little pockets of fat that poke through now, and it's going to give you that cellulite look, all right? But for this, there's no shortcut. Exercise and stretching with super hydration, all right? And I should have put warm exercise, hot, like hot yoga, um, 
using body suits or out in the sun, etc., etc. Heat. You need that heat to restore the function of the fascia. Boom. Next slide is correct. So here's how the water breaks down in your body. You got intracellular, all right? Inside of your cells is two-thirds of your water. All of that water is supposed to be structured like jelly, all right? Two-thirds of your water in the cell. What controls how that water behaves, the movement of that water? Potassium and magnesium balance. So they tell you all the time when you get cramps, you're probably low on magnesium. But they just not connecting the dots. It's because the magnesium controls the water in the, in the cells. And when you're exercising, you're pushing your myocytes, which are your muscle cells, to the fullest extent. So you're usually burning out all of the magnesium. You got to... They would give you the, the supplements and it still would... Because sometimes the supplements be ass. <laughs> It ain't the same as the, that's, that's why I was saying the supplement earlier, I, I know you're in and out on the job, but I was saying earlier, you got to have the plant because you get all of the stuff or at least a plant-based compound because you need all the stuff in the plant to process the mineral. So they'll extract the minerals from the plants and give you a magnesium chloride, magnesium sulfide supplement. But where's the enzymes that breaks this down and turns it into whatever compound I needed to be in so it to be active in the cell, right? So that's the key for intracellular hydration, potassium and magnesium, extracellular, meaning outside of the cells, all right? Your liquid, sodium controls that water. Now, your extracellular water is broken down into two more groups of the same pattern. Everything is fractal. Interstitial. Interstitial means it's outside your circulatory system, outside of your organs and tissues, right? So it serves as the go-between. This is how your nutrients get from the circulatory system to the organ, right? It's not little, sh like, shuttles that go, well, actually there are. It's called albumin, but Interstitial fluid is how they work, all right? Sodium. Intravascular, that's uh, plasma. That's, that's the water inside your blood, or the, I should say the water your blood sits in, all right? So your plasma proteins, albumin is one of those. That's the guy that carries all the nutrients around, and sodium controls how that water behaves, all right? Now... Water is absorbed by the villi and the intestine. So, here's another reason people might be drinking a lot of water and still be dehydrated. A lot of people don't have good bowel movements. They backed up. If you ate three, if you ate three meals yesterday and you only had one bowel movement yesterday, you backed up. So, some people think even people that go to the bathroom and do a number two every day, they think that's good. No. You're supposed to have just as many bowel movements as you had meals. So if you had three meals yesterday, you need to have three bowel movements associated with those three meals. If not, two of those meals are still in there. And if your bowels is compacted with hard feces, or even soft feces for that matter, the little villi that line the intestine never come in contact with the water. So the water just comes out. All right? Blood is lymph or water with a high concentration of red blood cells and other solutes in it. Synovial fluid is a blood filtrate. A lot of people ask me about arthritis. This is why arthritis is associated with diabetes. Because diabetes is associated with glycation. Glycation is how sugars stick to proteins in your body, right? So when we get all this gluey, sticky stuff in the blood, obviously it's going to wind up in the joints. Every time you, you, you move a joint, it opens up and new fluid goes in. If that fluid is 
sticky, nasty, gunky, etc., that's going to be in your joint. Your joint is going to now become sticky, nasty, gunky, etc. Only problem is it's going to take a lot longer to clean that joint than it is going to be to clean your blood after. Plasma has many different names in the body. We talked about that earlier. Pleurisy fluid and, you know, the, uh, the pericardium sitting around the heart, etc., etc. Uh, albumin is the key transporter in the plasma of nutrients and is flushed out of the body with the outer layer of the mucous membrane during inflammation. All right? This is very key. So if you have high amounts of inflammation in your body and you're taking supplements, you're going to be getting some benefit from the supplements, but it doesn't matter whose supplements they are. They could be mines mixed with Sabies mixed with Jesus's. <laughs> If you don't have the albumin in the body to transport the nutrients, you're not going to get the benefit. Grand opening, grand closing. If you have a lot of fat cells in the body, you're going to have inflammation. Period. If you spend a lot of time on a computer, it's compounded because you have that blue light on you all day. So on my computer, you see I got, I got a screen that I could put on it. But I got one that's taped on it. It just stays on there to block as much blue light as possible. We got the little glasses at home. Um, so you want to try to limit everything you can. The lymphatic system refills the circulatory system in the neck via the jugular and the subclavian veins. All right? Fat, make a key note, is the only tissue that doesn't store hydrogen or partake in electron sharing. So it literally can do nothing but make you sick. It's impossible to be overweight and healthy. Don't let anybody fool you. And trust me, I used to be 256, so I know. Sput them, right. It's, it's mucus, but what you're seeing is white blood cells in it. So mucus is, is a secretion from your internal skin to kind of trap anything that doesn't belong there. Right. So, so I'm a little confused with the album. If you have inflammation, you say... You so like... The album there, so you've got to get rid of the inflammation before the minerals can Well, no, no, no. No, they're going to still work. You're going to still get benefit because you're not going to get rid of all the albumin. But like, say, for instance, you go to the, a doctor and they take your test, whatever the case may be. And they see, uh, they say, well, um, Mr. Such and Such, we notice you have high amounts of protein in your urine. That protein in the urine is albumin. They just say protein instead of saying albumin, but it's albumin that they're seeing coming out in the urine. So that tells them that there's inflammation somewhere in the body. So now they know to go in there and track it down. But you, I want people to have this in mind when you're on your different programs that it's a, it's a process you're going through as you're getting yourself healthier. So even, in ter like for instance, when we started working back out this spring, I told my daughter, I said, I got to get in shape in order to get in shape. She's like, what does that mean? I was like, I'm not even in shape enough to even start working out like I was working out before. I got to get my body back at a point where I can get a good workout in. I can't even get a good workout in. I'm that out of shape. So it's the same thing with our health. A lot of times we got to get ourselves in shape to start getting in shape. So we definitely have to use the supplementation and the herbs and the whatever we have to do, but we have to know it's going to take me a little bit longer, et cetera, et cetera, because of my condition. And then I can't always look at what somebody else is doing because that discourages people sometimes. If we both jump on the same program and then in two months I'm like, yeah, well, I lost 20 pounds and I'm ripped. Why are you looking like you bullshitting? They might be doing everything harder than you, but they might have some conditions that's limiting them, 
And if in their mind, nobody's telling them that it's a difference between how your biochemistry is going to function based on what's going on with you, they get discouraged and just throw their hands in the air and walk away from it. Instead of saying, well, no, I know, hey, okay, the blood cycle, the inflammation, okay, so it's a process for me I got to go through. So, now, I think this might be the last slide. Okay, yeah, almost last slide. So, this is the reason why, like, we, can get, we have to slam the door shut on the E-right for the blood type and all the other crazy stuff that we've been thinking, paleo and all kinds of crazy stuff. I went through Walmart, and they got this paleo thing in the freezer now, and it just looked crazy. Frozen body parts. I was like, what the hell? Paleo platter. Like, just... Like, it looked like a little liver was there and a little... Fr okay, yep, so it was a battery. All right, so this should be the end of all the confusion. The three most important things that we all know, whether we studied health for one minute or a hundred years, we know that we need water, we need oxygen, and we need some type of diet. Some type. Doesn't matter what school you come from. Pescatarian. I'm going to get a little fish for the DHA. I'm going to eat steak for B12. I'm, I hear it all all day. So, here's the key. When we breathe in oxygen, oxygen goes from our lungs to our heart to our red blood cells. And the end stage for oxygen is our mitochondria. This is how it just made super sense for me. When we drink water, it goes through our intestinal lumen, our blood plasma, our interstitial fluid, then to our organs, aquaporin gates, end game, mitochondria. When we eat food, no matter what type of food it is, whether we're on an all-protein diet, all-fat diet, all carbohydrate diet, because there's a difference between processed sugars and healthy sugars, so vegans fit in here, right? They're somewhere in between carbohydrates and... So it doesn't matter whether we're getting all protein, fat, sugars, etc. Proteins are broken down to fats. Fats are broken down to sugars. Sugars are broken down to acids. Acids are broken down in your Krebs cycle to feed electrons to your mitochondria. So, if the water's end game is the mitochondria, the oxygen's end game is the mitochondria, and the food's end game is the mitochondria, what should we be eating for to optimize? <laughs> Nobody? One person? All right, we'll try that again. So, if the mitochondria in the water, mitochondria in the food, mitochondria, what should we be eating to optimize? All right. Y'all need to optimize y'all mitochondria, man. All right, so questions. <laughs>